Turn with me in your Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew at chapter 16. Matthew's Gospel at chapter number 16. Commencing with verse number 24 through verse 26. Matthew chapter number 16, verse 24, 25, and 26. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Thank you. You may be seated. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. Discipleship is costly. That's what I want to talk about this morning. Our, our theme in line with our 40 Days of Purpose campaign, our Purpose Driven Life campaign, our emphasis for this upcoming week is discipleship. And discipleship is costly. Because couch in that word discipleship is the word discipline. And we despise discipline. We don't want nobody telling us what to do. We don't want anybody making any demands on us. We rebel against discipline. What, what does it mean to be a Christian? Some people believe that to be a Christian means belonging to a church. But if going to church can make you a Christian, sitting in a garage can make you a car. Others believe that baptism or confirmation makes one a Christian. Still others believe that being religious and and morally clean is enough to allow one to even wear the name Christian. To answer the question, what does it mean to be a Christian, let's look at the word Christian itself. This word literally means the Christ ones, or one who is like Jesus. The word Christian is first used in the Bible in Acts chapter 11 at verse 26 in Antioch, Syria, because they were first called people of the way. Because the way was following Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way. And so they were called people of the way. But then the people in Antioch who were pagans called them Christians to insult them to criticize them. It was, it was not a term of endearment, but it was a word of derision and, and they hated them because they acted like Christ. They looked like, they talked like Christ. And, and Jesus reminds us here that if they hated me, they're going to hate you. Because the servant is no greater than his master. And many of us do not like the discipline, the yoke of Christianity because we want everybody to like us. We want everybody to approve of us. We want everybody to speak well of us. We want plenty of likes on our Facebook page. We want people to always say good things about us. But, but if you would live godly in Christ Jesus, you will suffer persecution. Amen. 
Hear me, brothers and sisters. In this passage, Jesus is talking to his disciples about his impending death. He is immediately rebuked by Peter and Jesus uses this opportunity to teach them about the heart of real Christianity. In verse 24, we get down to the heart of what it truly means to be a Christian. If you would be my disciple, he said you must first deny yourself. Take up a cross and follow me. Luke says, follow me daily. Deny yourself. Take up a cross and follow me. Deny, take up. That's Eris imperative, which means take it up, deny once and for all, and don't ever go back to that. But that word follow me is the present imperative, which means follow me in everything you do. In every circumstance, in every situation, in every storm, in every life moment, follow me. So in order to do that, brothers and sisters, you must first find your heart. Find your heart. If Jesus Christ is not the center of your existence, you need to find him before you leave here this morning. If he's not the end all and the be all of your life, if Christ is not Lord of all, he does not want to be Lord at all. Find our heart. If any man, listen to me, if any man will, if any man will, if any man with a volitional surrender of his will, if any man will, that word will gives you an option to withdraw. Listen to me. In Judges chapter 7, Jerubbabel, who is Gideon, was called by God to go and fight the Midianites. I wish I had a Bible reader here. And the scripture says that Jerubbabel or Gideon gathered some people to go with him to fight the Midianites. And there were 32,000. Read it when you get home. God said, Gideon, you got too many. Go and whisper in their ears and say, everybody who wants to go home, leave right now. And 22,000 said, deuces. I'm out of here. Thank you for the invitation. They left, went home, never came back. 10,000 were left. God said, you still got too many. Take them down to the river and I will test them for you. I wish I had two or three more Bible readers. He said, those who, who, who get ready to drink and they jump all in the water and splashing and just water all over their face, put them on one side. And one who get on one knee and drink and bring water up to their mouth, looking at their surroundings, put them on the other side. And when Gideon got through with the Lord's test, 300 were left. Which says to me this morning that when the 22,000 left, everybody does not want to be a soldier. Everybody who shows up don't want to be here. I wish I had somebody to help me. Somebody's here because your mama made you come to church. Or somebody's here because you've been going to church all your life, so all you know to do automatically on Sunday morning is get up and come to church. That's not a good reason to be at church. You're going to help me preach this, won't you? And then of that 10,000, 9,700 9, were not qualified. A whole lot of folk want to work in the church. They just ain't got no church sense. <laughs> Talk back to me if you can. Because you don't do church like you do HISD. You don't do church like you do Shell or Exxon or, 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 or how you run your house or how you run your fraternity or your. This is the body of Christ. 
This is not the Lynx. This is not Jack and Jill. This is not AKA. This is not Delta Sigma Theta. Whosoever will, let him come and drink from the fountain of life freely. All kind of people come to church who don't want to be here. And then there's some folk who are here who want to work but they're not qualified. And then he said, you got enough for this 300. And they routed the Midianites because God don't need a church full of people. He needs a people full of church. And if you are full of church, God can turn this community upside down. Oh, brothers and sisters, he will have no unwilling soldiers, nor any who does not come into the ranks of serving God with your eyes wide open. In other words, God don't want you in here under false pretenses. This is not a show. This is not an auditorium. I'm not making a speech. I'm not up here motivating you and entertaining you. Get rid of that entertainment philosophy and that nightclub mentality. This is the living, breathing, active, dynamic body of Christ. And if you would be a disciple of Jesus Christ, you've got to give up what you want to follow what he wants. Why are you here this morning? What, what motivated you to, to get up out of bed, put on all this makeup and girdle and, and pantyhose and, and, and eye shadow and comb your hair and drive uh, on these bad streets, uh, get in this neighborhood, because Lily Grove ain't on the way nowhere. You got to find your way here. Uh, you got to know where you're going to get here. What, what made you go through all that? You live in Humble. You live in in Galveston County. You live in Missouri City, Pearland. What, what drove you to come here this morning? Because if you're here for the wrong reason, you'll get what you came for. And if you're here for the right reason, you'll get what you came for. Because you always get what you come after. Somebody's here out of duty. It's my Sunday to serve. Uh, my team is on. It's my Sunday to be a greeter. It's my Sunday to be an usher. My choir sings today. That's, so it's my duty to be here. I got to teach my Sunday school class. I'm here because I have a duty that keeps me here. Then somebody's here out of a habit. Sunday morning is just like Monday morning. You go to work out of habit. Lord have mercy, yeah, it is Monday morning. <laughs> Let me go try to make a dollar out of 15 cents. <laughs> and then Sunday morning gets like that too after a while if you, if you come here for the wrong reason. Well, it, it's the second Sunday. The children sing, oh, Lord. <laughs> the men, oh, God, no. Well, maybe Reverend Anderson is going to preach. And if I ain't here, uh-uh, I know better than that. Somebody should have told me he wasn't going to be here. You come here out of habit, looking for what you're looking for. See how quiet you got right there? I just slipped a Mickey in your drink, and you didn't even know what was going on. And then some people come to see and be seen. Church is a good place to network and to hook up uh, and to uh, get some digits. Uh, find out uh, who is who and who don't have who. Uh, who I might be able to be who with. That's to see and be seen. And then some of you come here because you love this new building. Ain't put no money in, you just love this, this new building. It's beautiful, it's, it's attractive, it, it stands out. It's our church. 
Your name ain't even on the road. <laughs> this new building has you excited. The only valid reason to attend church, not out of duty, not out of habit, not to see and be seen, not because you love this new building, the only valid reason to attend church is you love the Lord and you came here to worship. And if you don't love the Lord and if you didn't come here to worship, I got two words for you. If you are a sinner, you need to be saved. And if you're saved, you need to be sold out. Can I run that by you one more time? If you are a sinner, you need to be saved. And if you're already saved, you need to be sold out. I wish I had my 11 o'clock crowd here this morning. <laughs> Why does Lily Grove even exist in the first place? There are only three valid reasons why this or any other church is open this morning. To exalt the Savior, to equip the saints, and to evangelize the sinner. And if we are not exalting the Savior, and if we are not equipping the saints, and if we are not evangelizing the sinner, we are open under false pretenses. I wish I had a witness here. I would, um, I would, I would think it odd if I went to Shipley's and they didn't have any donuts. I would look askance at them if I went to McDonald's and they didn't have a quarter pounder. I, I would really feel bad if I went to This Is It and there was no chitney, pig's feet, grease running all down my arm, and my pressure all up. I, I would really feel bad if I came to church and that was no worship. Because if we're not going to worship God, we ought to take the sign down. If we're not going to be disciples, we ought to take the sign down. We got enough members, now we need some disciples. If any man will come after me, if any man will come behind me, He's got to deny himself. Find your heart. And then brothers and sisters, once you find your heart, secondly, you got to focus your heart. For the disciples of Jesus, the call to follow him meant the forsaking of everything else. There is no discipleship without self Denial. Your life and mine boils down to nothing more than our priorities. We go where we want to go. We do what we want to do. We follow who we want to follow. We are willing to do what we love doing because whatever your heart is in, that's what you're going to follow. See how quiet you got again. Brothers and sisters, if you, if you know more about your sorority or your fraternity than you know about the Bible, your life is out of balance. Come on, help me preach it. If your heart is more into some stuff that happens outside the church and when you get to church you almost fall asleep, you need to get your priorities checked. If you on time for everything in your life and always late for church, church is not your priority. I, I apologized to the leaders, to the deacons, to the officers of our church, to Sunday school teachers in a meeting once. Uh, and I, I, first of all, I, I asked God to forgive me because I repented for making this foolish statement that I did not expect them or you to have the same level of commitment to this that I do. 
And I made that statement for years until the Holy Spirit convicted me of that. And I apologize to God for even making that stupid statement. And then I, I apologize to the leaders of this church and I want to apologize to the members of this church because I do expect you to have the same level of commitment to this that I do. Because the same thing it takes for me to go to heaven it's going to take for you to go to heaven. Talk back to me if you can. There's no section in heaven roped off for pastors and preachers and then there's another section for members and ushers. The same qualifications that it takes for me is going to take for you. And just like I'm committed to it, I expect you to have the same level of commitment to it. What kind of Christian are you that you can take it or leave it? You don't come because you didn't feel like coming this morning. Well, suppose God don't feel like waking you up tomorrow. All the doors God has opened for you. All the blessings God has showered on you. All the prayers God has answered for you. All the doors God has made for you. You are here this morning not because you went to college. Not because you got money in the bank. Not because you're working with white folk. You're here today because of the Lord's mercy. Some of you are members of Lily Grove. I don't see you at anything but Sunday morning. Nothing. You are not involved in anything but Sunday morning. That's pitiful. Sad. You are nominal, peripheral, marginal, and if you didn't show up, this thing would still go on. Which means something wrong with your commitment. Well, Reverend, I work. Yes, sir. Everybody works. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, Reverend, I got to keep my grandbaby. That's God's children. Come on. All right. All right, now. Reverend, I'm tired. If I don't take care of myself, nobody else will. God will take care of you. Yeah. <laughs> and please don't even talk about these 18 to 40 year olds. <laughs> these young adults, because you, 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 you got to know that if you're between 18 to 40, chances are you're a fool. <laughs> because you look for them and, and they on a cruise. Yeah. All the stuff they want to do. And I think we need to be doing this at the church. And the church ain't doing this. And the church ain't doing that. That's why I don't go to church. Because they ain't doing nothing. What, at, at, what, 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 what age you thought I was when I started working in the church? I started preaching at 18, pastoring at 20. I never had a young adult life. All my sinning I had to do in church. Because I've been in church all my life. Somebody ought to help me preach here. And then the old folk who work in here, they didn't start working when they got old. They've been serving God all their lives. The scripture says, remember your creator in the days of your youth. While the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh. Serve God while you're strong. Serve God while your mind is clear. Serve God while you're pretty and fine. Serve God while you got your health and strength so that when you get wore out, you can encourage somebody else. Be thou faithful unto death and I will give you a crown of life what while it's day I wish I had a Bible reading for the night is coming when no man can work oh, brothers and sisters why, why are you why are you why, 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 why don't you focus and and, and stop trying to please everybody. 
and stop trying to be all things to all people because you wind up being nothing to nobody. The folk who gonna love you, gonna love you anyway. And the folk who don't, didn't love you to start with, you ain't gonna miss what you never had. If, if, if God can get you up to go to work, you ought to get up and come to church. And not just come to church on Sunday, you ought to be here for the Purpose Driven Life campaign. You ought to be involved in a ministry. There are almost 40 ministries going on at this church and you ain't in one of them. You mean there's nothing here that you can do? Oh, I know what the problem is. You want to be a superstar. But God told me to tell you, you don't have to be a star, baby. To be in my show. Just show up on Sunday. They use the same people all the time. That's because that's who shows up. Show up and we can use you. But we can't use you at the club. At the spa. <laughs> we can't use you in the Bahamas. We can't use you watching America Got Talent. We can't use you at somebody else's church. See how quiet you got again? I'm just visiting. I'm just shopping. I almost said a bad word. Listen, brothers and sisters. I, I worked on this, so I want you to hear this. I, I practiced this, so I want you to hear it. We think too much of the cross as an instrument of reconciliation and forgiveness and too little of the cross as a way of life. Let me say that one more time. I, I got to say it again because I practiced it. We think too much of the cross as an instrument of reconciliation and forgiveness and too little of the cross as a way of life. Because what we call cross-bearing is not really cross-bearing. Your mother-in-law is not your cross. Your crazy son is not your cross. That, that, that piece of job is not your cross. Old age is not your cross. Your cross is you're trying to do right and they're lying on you. You're trying to serve God and they're on the parking lot plotting against you. That's a cross. You're trying to give God your best and they're speaking evil of you. Bearing a cross means sometimes you got to give up right for wrong. You know it's wrong, but you just go on and pray about it. Stay away from it. Don't, don't participate in it. But at the same time, sometimes you got to let folk have their way in order for you to give God glory. Because if you argue with a fool, we won't be able to tell the difference. The cross is not just an instrument of reconciliation and forgiveness. The cross is a symbol of how you live your life. Yes. Now, brothers and sisters, this, this, this word kind of falls on deaf ears. Not, not deaf ears, but, but kind of softens when we hear it. Because when we think about a cross, we think about a symbol. We think about something to be worn around our neck or something we to be put on, a, on, on our belt or something to, to tattoo on our ankle or, or something to wear on a bracelet. A cross for us is, is, is uh, some kind of uh, amulet or some kind of beautiful trinket. It's either gold or sterling silver. A cross for us is, is, is just a pretty piece of jewelry. But the first century people who heard this when Jesus said, take up a cross, when they heard that, they knew immediately 
he meant to come die. Dietrich Bonhoeffer in his book, The Cost of Discipleship, says that when Christ calls a man, he calls him to come die. And when they heard the word cross, when Jesus talked to them about a cross, they knew that he meant inevitably you may lose your life for what you believe. You may lose your job for what you believe. You may lose some friends for what you believe. You may be kicked out of your family because of what you believe. And if your faith does not bother people, then your faith ain't worth too much. Because if you're really committed and a disciple, you're going to make some folk angry with you. The Bible says, be careful when all men speak well of you. Something about you has got to annoy the devil. You got to trouble the devil. You got to worry the devil. And if you are not troubling the devil, or if the devil is not troubling you, it's because you're not troubling him. You're not a disciple because you come to church every Sunday. You're just a member of Lily Grove. That ain't no disciple. That's a member. Just like you're a member of, of some, some fraternity. You're a member of some civic club. You're a member of AARP. That's, that's me membership. And that stuff has its privileges. But membership in the church has its responsibility. And too many of us are looking for privileges with no responsibility. Talk back to me if you can. Show up on Sunday morning because you might get a chance to appear on the jumbotron. Or you'll be on television next Sunday morning at 6 o'clock. That ain't no reason to come to church. No, 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 no. God wants more of you than Sunday morning attendance. Because Sunday morning attendance could be duty, habit, to see and be seen, or you just want to network and hook up and, you know, this is a place to be, this is a place to do that. It's new, it's, it's going on, it's, it's the new thing happening right now. But as soon as Wheeler open in new church, you're going to be over there. And then the, the newest uh, craze that comes along, you're going over there. The newest philosophy that's going on, you're going over there. And I hear young people say that all the time. I just, I, I just have to go uh, yeah. be, because I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to another level. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the word now. I'm going, I'm going to another level. Yeah, that's, that's what they tell me when they leave. I'm going to another level. I say, oh, you you going to the church where the pastor TiVo's my sermons. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that's where you going. So when he leaves you, he go to his house and listen to me preach. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I don't blame you. I'd go over there too. <laughs> so he can preach all my sermons to you. We, we are so fickle and so, so fractured and, and so brittle that, that the least little thing that comes along destroys our faith and tears up our courage and messes up our... Grow up! Stop acting like a child. When I was a child, Paul said, I fought like a child. I understood like a child. I spoke like a, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Some things ought not bother you after you're 50 and 60 years old. Everybody talking ain't talking about you. You ain't that important. So and so don't like, so what they don't like you? Like yourself. Take yourself to the movies. Take yourself to dinner. Call your house phone, print your cell phone, and speak to yourself. Be comfortable in your own skin. 
God made you who you are. Like yourself. Love yourself. Stop being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Stop letting the slight cunning of men turn you away from the things of God. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The world behind me the cross before me. I wish I had a witness here. Though none go with me, still I will follow. You can have this whole world, just give me Jesus. You can't make me mad enough not to shout on Sunday morning. You can't bother me enough not for me to get here and give God the glory. Because I don't come here for you. I come here because I need mercy. Have I got a witness? I come here because I want to worship God for the many blessings that he just turned loose in my life. There's somebody here like me. God has just gone wild blessing me. Did you hear that? I said there's somebody here like me. God has just gone wild blessing me. I got to ask the Lord, what's the matter with you? Giving me all this grace. No good as I am. Low down as I am. You still opening doors. You still making a way out of no way. And you think I'm going to stay home on Sunday morning because somebody made me mad? Find your heart. Focus your heart. To deny yourself means to subordinate your appetites and your desires to God's will made known for us in Jesus Christ. Self-denial does not mean asceticism and self-flagellation as was often inferred in medieval monasticism. God is not calling us to cloister in the sanctuary like we are in a monastery. We are not to cloister in a sanctuary like we are in a monastery, but we are to come here and get full of God's Holy Spirit and go out and live what you heard me preach. You're going to get hurt. You're going to be taken advantage of. People will act like they love you when they don't. They'll pretend to be your friend to just get something out of you. But what does that matter? You ain't serving them. You serving God. You drive. I was, I was driving yesterday and this man was on the side of the road. He had a sign that said, uh, uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to work, I just want to be here. See, that's what he wrote on his sign. I don't want to work, I just want to be here. I gave him two dollars. I said, have one on me. Matter of fact, I'm going home and get one myself. It's hot. I need to refresh myself. I didn't have no more water. So I, he and I enjoyed ourselves. These, 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 these opportunities for service, I know he was taking advantage of me. I know he was using me. But he was up front about it. He was not like some of my family. And some church members who got a trick up his sleeve. He just said, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't working, I just want to drink myself. So I told him, go get your drink on, on me. And, and listen, when you 
when you serve God, uh, after a while, you, you kind of get in a rut because it looks like you're not going anywhere. Look like you're not making any progress and you take two steps forward and three steps backwards. But keep walking. Because obedience is not starting and stopping. Obedience is to just keep on walking even when you can't see what the road is going to be. Have I got a witness here? God does not pay you for starting and stopping. He pays you for finishing. You, you, you ought not be more committed to outside stuff than you are to Jesus Christ. You ought not get all your outside stuff out the way and say, when I get through with this, then I'm going to start working in the church. You might not live that long. Oh, I, I, can't, I, I can't be here because of my contract. I can't be here because of my responsibilities. You know, when they think they're smart, they shake their head. You know. Because of what I do. You think God is intimidated by your intelligence? I mean, you actually think that God is in heaven scratching his head because you went to school? He made it possible. And then he's going to be intimidated by your little infinitesimal mind? No, you know, no, 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 stop, stop making all of these excuses because that's what they are. You're just making excuses because you want to do what you want to do. Everybody in here can do exactly what they want to do. If you don't go to church, if you don't get involved in ministry, that's because you don't want to get involved. That's simply because you have made up your mind, I'm going to be a Sunday morning, marginal, peripheral member of Lily Grove and if I feel like going I'm going to go if I don't feel like going I'm not going to go what are you going to do to me I ain't going to do nothing uh, might pray for you might pray for you but, but, but you don't intimidate God because God has until this morning to meet his match. Nobody makes a fool of God. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. That's what that scripture means. Nobody makes a fool of God. You reap what you sow. And you're going to get out of it what you put in it. Find your heart. Focus your heart. Last word. Follow your heart. Follow your heart. Those of you here like me can remember, if, if you're not too old, you can remember when you were first dating and courting, when you first fell in love with your intended. You, you, you remember that. I know it ain't been that long. It's been 18, 20, 40 years, but you, you can still remember. You, you would fall asleep on the phone. And she said, hang up. You said, no, you hang up. <laughs> and then you say, hang up. She said, no, you hang up. Y'all back and forth. All, you open the door for her when she get ready to get in the car. Pull the chair back when y'all get to the restaurant. Open the door to let her go before you. And now y'all been together about 26, 29 years. <laughs> You get in the car and she's still outside. <laughs> you you go in the door, she yeah, you you left her outside the door. She used to cook for you and you would tell her how good it was. And now she cooked and prepares and put it on the table and say, how is it? You say, I'm eating it, Anna. <laughs> you, 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 still, you, still, you still got it. You still love her. The, the, the fire is still there. It's just burning low.
my mama used to tell us, load that fire under my pot. The devil done lowered that fire under your pot. And you used to burn with enthusiasm for God and for church. And we couldn't beat you getting here and shouting and praising God. But now God's been so good to you. You got too much. That's why you ain't shouting like you ought to shout. God's been too good to you. That's why you sitting down there like you don't know who it was that brought you. But don't forget the same God who put you up there can watch you come down from there. And so I'm going to praise God while I got a chance because I don't just give God glory for stuff. I thank God for who he is. Listen to me. We are called to lay something down, pick something up, and live something out. I'm through. We are called to lay something down. Deny yourself means to completely disown you. To utterly separate yourself from you. Let me, let me hurry up and say, it sounds hard because it is hard. The self does not want to be denied. That's why it's hard to fast. Because the body does not want to be denied food. That's why it's hard to do right. Because the self wants to do what it wants to do. Somebody ought to help me preach it. The body, the self, is determined to have its own way. And so Paul says, I beat my body. That I may make it my slave. My body doesn't get the best of me. I got to get the best of it. He said, we are in a race. And it's not a hundred yard dash. It's a marathon. You got to run, not till you get tired, but till you die. You got to work, not until somebody comes to take your place, but work till you die. Faithfulness is not starting and stopping. It's being involved in it even when you don't get any credit for it. Because we can get twice as much done if we quit worrying about who got the credit. It's not about credit because it's about reward when you stand before God. I'm not looking for credit. I'm looking for a reward. Hear me, brothers and sisters. He is no fool who forsakes what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. He is no fool who forsakes what he can't keep to gain what he can't lose. Nike just shouted at me the other day with a commercial with Colin Kaepernick. And as much as I admire Colin Kaepernick and what he's doing and, and what black players are doing, black athletes are doing in the NFL and in other sports, it, it, it's always odd and strange to me that, that the flag that represents freedom is freedom as long as you do what white people want you to do. But, but the minute you stand up against brutality and against corruption and, and against degeneration, then you are unpatriotic. But one of the founding fathers of this country, I need, to, I need to get on TV and tell these people this, that one of the founding fathers of this country, Patrick Henry, said, I may not agree with what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. I may not agree with what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. That's what it means to be an American. And Nike is being castigated by the president and members of the larger community because they are standing with Colin Kaepernick. But, but, but here, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not trying to get him a job. I'm not, I'm not trying to get in the NFL. I'm not trying to do none of that. 
All I'm saying is I like the slogan because it ought to be in the Bible. It's written on Colin Kaepernick's face in the ad and it ought to be in the Bible. It says, believe in something even if you have to lose everything. Believe in something even if it costs you everything. That's discipleship. Serving God may cost me something, but I'm going to do it anyway. I might be the only one left in my family, but I'm going to still serve God. My body might be rocking with sickness, but I'm still going to serve God. My eyes might get dim and my hearing grow dull and my footsteps get short, but I'm still going to serve God. So serving the Lord is going to pay off. Not just after a while, but I've got some blessings right now. He redeems my life from destruction. He satisfies my mouth with good things. He renews my strength like the eagle. If you want to see your life soar, start serving God like a disciple. Uh, you, got to, you got to lay something down. But then you got to pick something up. You got to pick up a cross. You got to die to yourself. You've got to put yourself in the background. I want this, but God wants that. I want to go here, but God says go back. I've missed out on a whole lot of family stuff because I've had to preach the gospel. My wife, first wife, walked out because I would not loosen my commitment to this church. But everything I've lost, God made it up. Everything that I thought had gotten away from me, God made it up. And I need to tell somebody in here this morning, it may look like you're losing. But if you trust God, he'll make it up. I need some witnesses here this morning who can help me testify, has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Father, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainteth not. There's no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the weak, to them that have no might. He increases their strength. Even the youth shall faint and grow weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Mount up with wings like eagles. Run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. Reverend Ike used to say this. And he had it wrong because his theology was off. But I'm going to quote Reverend Ike in the spirit of the Bible. Reverend Ike used to say, you can't lose with the stuff I use. He had it all wrong. That was prosperity, gospel. But, but as a Christian, as a believer, as a follower of Jesus Christ, you can't lose with the stuff I use. He walks with me. He wakes me up in the morning. He puts food on my table. He makes my enemies my footstool. He opens doors that were closed in my face. When it looks like I can't make it another week, he gives me strength to keep on going. When I get depressed, he comes in to cheer me up. When I'm down, he comes to lift my spirit. When I don't know which way to turn, he shines his light in my situation. When the storm is raging in my life, he quiets it with his hand. You can't lose with the stuff I use. I'm 
I'm through. I'm waiting on my hero to preach at 11 o'clock. I'm through. But there's nothing so precious as Jesus to me. Let earth with its treasures be gone. I'm rich as can be. With my Savior I see. I'm happy with Jesus alone. I'm happy with Jesus alone. I'm happy with Jesus alone. Though poor and deserted, thank God I can say, I'm happy. Yes, I am. I wake up happy. I go to bed happy. I sit down at the table happy. I drive in the neighborhood happy. I walk down the street happy. I meet folk who don't even want to shake my hand. I'm still happy. I'm just shaking their hand. I don't even know why they're mad. I just shake their hand because I'm happy. You ain't going to make me stop singing Amazing Grace. You're not going to make me angry enough not to give God all my service. I am a disciple. An imitator. A learner. A student. A pupil of Jesus Christ.